Hey, I'm Joe Spison. <laughs> How do I say that so fast? Hey, I'm Joe Spison. I'm a wedding photographer in Seattle, and uh, today I want to talk about panoramas, uh, specifically panoramic photos on film. Itself. So I've been into panoramas since I first got into photography a really long time ago. I always thought they were so cool. Even when I was still shooting with like point shoots and stuff, I always loved taking pictures and stitching them together and making something that was either wider or taller than what like a normal frame could do just because it told more of the story and I felt like it showed more context and more details and all those kind of things. So it was really cool. And with that, I've always wanted to have a camera that could actually shoot wide panoramas and stuff. But the most famous of those, the Hasselblad X-Pan is crazy expensive, like four, five thousand dollars, which seems like way too much for a film camera. Um, so I was trying to think of ways that I could do this, and I came across a way online that you can modify uh, medium format cameras that you have to shoot them in medium format. So I thought today would be a really cool day to do it. It's a really sunny day, and so I think Lena and I are going to go downtown to where they're taking out the old uh, viaduct here in Seattle, and maybe with that big, long, wide piece of road that, that they're tearing down, it could be some really interesting wide images. So this is how we're going to how I'm going to do that modification. Um, First, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take here. I have my uh, Nvidia 67. Now, this is definitely something you could do with something with a 6x6 camera, like the Nvidia 6 here. But I want the 67 because I do want it to be a little bit wider. Uh, and so, in order to do that, I obviously have to have the camera. Um, and then I need 35 mil, which is different, obviously, than the 120, which is what we usually use um, in a medium format camera. I'm going to use Portra 400 today, and then the most important tool are these two little pieces of plastic. They're like 3D printed things. I got them on eBay for just a couple bucks. I'm sure if you know how to 3D print, you can make them for next to nothing. But these are the tools that make it possible to be able to do this. So what you have to do is you have to do it in the net backwards. No, that's right. So these go in just like so into this. And you have to line them up so that they're on the threading. And that will enable you to then, this is now the same size as a piece of 120, so it's going to fit just inside there. And so now I can open up the back, take this out. Oops, that's a little dirty. Um, and so that's ready to go around. So I can take my 120 here and I'm going to put it just inside, just like so. And uh, yeah, that's on there. Nope, that's backwards. So one thing that is really important on here is you have to know that you're going, you want your emulsion side out. So I had done that backwards, and so with that, the emulsion side is the shiny side. The emulsion side is the other side. So this is going to come around just like so, and I can pull that across here and slide it into the spool and now as I start to wind it should start to wind up normally. Yeah, so that feels really good. So now that goes back into the camera just like so. And you can see here that now instead of taking up that full space that it usually would with a piece of 120, it's only going here on that little bit in between. So I can close the door in here. And then um, it's just gonna be one stroke with the winder, and it's actually gonna be ready to go. So usually it takes three strokes here with the RZ because you have to go through the excess paper that's on either end of the, the film. So with, but with the, the regular film here, because I don't have that leader, just one stroke should get it just around enough that it's going to be pulling from there that it's gonna start taking photos. Now, it might just, that first photo might be trimmed off just a little bit, but I'm totally okay with that. Um, I want to use as much of this piece of film as I can. Then when I'm taking those fir the first photo, so again, it takes three strokes usually before it gets into the normal, the normal place of film um, for this particular camera. But with this, um, I want to take photos before then. So I, every time I take a photo, I then have to slide it here into um, multiple exposures. And that is what it needs so that it'll take photos when it thinks it's not ready. So I can then I can take a photo and I have to flip it, um, flip it back to normal one stroke, flip it to that, take a photo, back into normal, one more stroke, and then I'd be into that like number one, which is where then it would take normal photos. And usually I think with a roll of 36, I should be able to get 
13 or 14 maybe photos out of a roll of 36 film as compared to the 10 I would take normally. Now obviously like that's that's the difference here is I could just shoot regular 120 film on here and just crop it. Um, either cutting the film, which would be silly, or um, cropping a post or something like that, cropping on a computer. But I really like the idea of shooting in a wide port format because it makes you think the whole way. And uh, this is going to allow it, so it's actually going to be exposing onto the sprockets, which will look really cool. For today's shoot, I'm going to shoot um, on my 90mm, um, which is probably the widest lens I have for the RZ right now, just because I want as much of that width as possible. So one thing will be really important is when I'm done with all of this and I start you know, finish shooting all the 12, 13, 14, how many number of photos I get out of this, is then to figure out how to take it back out safely. And so I'll have to take a dark bag with me. And then what I'll be able to do is I can take the dark slide in here and I can slide it into the camera. And then I'll be able to take the back off just like this. And it's totally protected. It's completely light proof. And that goes into the dark bag. And once I'm in there, then I can take it off and it'll come on, like I can take off both the spool and the, the leader that it's leading onto. And then I'm just gonna swiftly, swiftly twist that back into the, the cassette, the normal cassette for the film. Once that's totally back inside, I can take it all out of the bag and I'll just put that in. And then I can just process it like I do regular 35 film. I'm probably gonna do that because I imagine once I finish this, I probably shoot another roll or two of 120 while we're out in the street today. Um, so let's go see how it looks.
shoot to, to work with and um, but yeah, like honestly, the colors on that role just turned out so weird. I don't, I have no idea what happened with that particular role. Um, I'm gonna show you at the end of this, I'll show you some other photos I took from that same day with medium format or with 35 that I thought turned out way better. And I think I was developing basically in the same tank. So I have no idea what happened with those colors and why they look weird. Um, I'd also mentioned that like, you can shoot it and show the sprocket. So I'll show you a couple of those. It looks like this. And yeah, you can really see how the colors are bleeding through the, the sprocket holes. It might be that they got like crazy overexposed and the colors didn't turn out right because of that. I don't know, I'm still doing some experimenting on that. Um, so it'll definitely be a place to, to learn and to get better, but this is kind of what I got for now. These things are definitely worth a couple bucks on Instagram. Uh, give it a shot. Uh, hit me up on Instagram at jtobiasin if you give it a shot. And I'd love to see what you what the photos that you come with.